Blake Harrison uh, with us now, who's uh, got the honour and the privilege to be being involved in all that. Blake, I have to say, I was travelling uh, last Sunday night, didn't get to see the first one, looking forward to downloading the whole series, yeah. because I think everything from the title, screaming out, world on fire, it's epic, is it not? It is. I think it's, it's you know, they, they've really pulled no punches with it. It's, it's, it's big budget. It's really filmic. The way it's shot is beautiful. The sets were incredible. Um, there was multiple units in, you know, like Prague, Manchester, Liverpool, uh, uh, Berlin, I think. And uh, so, yeah, they've, they've really gone to town on it. I think what's what's brilliant about it is it's about regular people whose lives are affected by this tragedy and from so many different perspectives. Not you know? just from a soldier's point of not view. Not just from a soldier's. It's and in not different like, countries. Yes, well. you know, we've got Polish. German, uh, um, uh, British. Uh, I, I think that you know that's that's what's going to be really relatable about it. Is you're watching ordinary people. It's not high-ranking generals or Hitler and Churchill or anything like that. It's regular people that are affected by this wave of terror. Really. Do you play? Um, excuse me, Sergeant Stan Raddings. Yes. How would you describe him? Uh, Stan is not the most sympathetic of guys. If anyone's watched the last episode, he's not the, <laughs> the <laughs> not nicest when it comes to uh, Harry Chase's kind of love triangle. He kind of puts him in his place a little bit. Um, but uh, he does have compassion for the men in his unit and he will sacrifice everything to help them and, and get them home in this, at this stage because, you know, they're being pushed back through France. And, uh, uh, but he doesn't have a huge amount of empathy for people outside of his circle and we'll see that as a... And what about for his, his senior officer? Harry, yeah, you know, who's very privileged, and you're yeah. kind of in between your guys, aren't you? Yes. And the, the man who's in charge. Are you doing that deliberately, using yeah. that in-between word? <laughs> Are you? You noticed. Uh, do you know, there's a number of amazing things about that. Um, when you immerse yourself in what happens, I mean, I'm, I'm a bit of an expert in World War II. Right. Um, uh, Ruth will always... Endless documentaries, I, I, endless. I, 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 do, I, I find it fascinating, and yeah. I think there, there's a number of things I think about you. First of all, how different a uniform makes a person look. Yeah. And secondly, realising you're a lad in your mid-30s, you'd have been probably too old for that conflict. Mm. Yeah. Really. I mean, I, I can't remember what age conscription was, but I think it was basically like early 20s, wasn't it? Mm. Uh, you know, it, it, these were young boys. Mm. You heard about them and lied about their age. Yes. They were 16 like, and 17. Because even though, you know, the, the, we've got Sean Bean playing uh, a character that was deeply affected by uh, participating in the First uh, World War, and, uh, you know, even after the First World War, you still had people signing up for, for kind of the adventure and the glory yeah. of, of it to, yeah. to begin with. I mean, obviously, now we know what was actually going on. I think you well, have to... Well, the horror and the know. reality of it, and when you've got some spectacular special effects... Yeah. You know, when you were in the middle of an explosion and tanks yeah. around you, how did that feel? Did you think about those young men and how they might have felt? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, it, there's a, a huge weight on your shoulders to try and show this time and, and these men so much respect and, 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 and honour their memory. Um, and... Yeah, the, 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 that's uh, that's just something that you you, you have to do. Were especially you ever when we were um, I wouldn't say I was ever frightened, but like there were definitely moments where <laughs> completely distancing yourself from that kind of uh, you know, respect and honouring their memory, but just as an actor, yeah. when you've got one take to do something because there's so much money kind of piled into these special effects, and uh, you know uh, if you do put a foot wrong, you might <laughs> get Messed something up the exploding whole in your up face. The whole scene. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. But, you know, you, think, you've got the adrenaline going. I think there as an actor, the job, right? what must be very important to you is is the fact that this puts so much distance between you and uh, what our producers keep talk, talking in our ears to tell us to ask you about, which is the in betweeners. <laughs> right. But you know, it must be nice from from an actor's point of view just to be totally different? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I definitely um, have been trying to, the last kind of four or so years, I've been doing more drama than I've been doing comedy. I think I've hardly done any comedy, really. I've been mainly doing uh, various different dramas and stuff. And and for me, the, the beauty of acting is the variety of work you get to do. You know, mm. I've just done Waitress, which is a, a yeah, musical. musical. Yeah, So were you trained in musical theatre, then? I think people are always surprised that either, oh, well, you're, you're playing a, a straight character in a, uh, in a drama, or oh, now you're doing musicals mm. and stuff mm. like that, and they don't realise that the majority of actors have usually trained for a long time to do yeah. a variety of, of work. But listen, I switched on Netflix last night and saw a trailer for um, a, a, a series called Spies, I think it was called, Sasha Baron Cohen as the lead in it. Uh, and 
just didn't recognise him, both yeah. in his, his persona, his deportment, every, everything about him, and that is what being a, a good actor is. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I always... My favourite actors growing up were always the ones that, that transformed, you know, like Gary Oldman for me, especially because he was a South Londoner as well, was, mm. you know, someone I always looked up to, and you watch him in so many different uh, performances. I mean, True Romance is, is is a film where he's in it for about ten minutes and completely steals the movie for me. Mm. He's so... so and Sean Bean is in this, so has, yes. do you get to do any scenes with him? Have you I unfortunately with him didn't get to work with, with Sean or, or, or Helen or Leslie. Oh, I no. was working uh, predominantly with, with, with Jonah Howard King and and Matt Aubrey and Kel Spellman, who were brilliant. We got on so well and had such a fantastic time filming together. So I wouldn't swap that for anything, but uh, it, it was... It's so lovely watching now things that I wasn't a part of. Like, Leslie Manville is a masterclass in this. Yeah. She's absolutely outstanding in it. And uh, the same goes for, for Helen and Sean as well. Yeah. So it's lovely seeing what they were doing whilst and I was you, doing my thing. Your children now are still very young, six. Yeah. Your daughter's six, your son's two. Yes. Um, your daughter, particularly at six, does she kind of understand what daddy's an actor? Yeah, now? little bits and little bits. And she she came to see, like, we can, me and my wife kind of set up an abridged version of Waitress for her because there are some adult themes in it. So uh, she missed, like, the first... Uh, well, she kind of came into it just before I come on in Act One, and then she missed the first 20 minutes of Act Two. <laughs> says, you know, she doesn't need to see Daddy dry humping people no, on stage. No, probably not. Therefore, uh, um, I presume probably you won't be showing her the in-betweeners anytime soon. I think she'll be 40 before she watches. <laughs> <that>. <laughs> yeah. Protective Daddy. Okay. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> in the meantime, uh, World on yeah, Fire. It continues maybe. Sunday night, nine o'clock on BBC One. Also available there on the iPlayer. Well done. Well Thank done. You, Thank, Thank you, Blake. Good to see you. Good having you. Thank you very much indeed.